In this video, I will talk about academic CVs in the UK context. What works and what doesn't. Now, you might be a PhD student trying to enter the UK market, aiming for a postdoc or lectureship position. In this case, this video is for you. We will go through some examples and we will discuss what is the best strategy, what's the best structure. I have written CVs for more than 20 years. I have reviewed hundreds of CVs for various jobs. I worked in the private sector, I worked in the public sector, I moved between different institutions, I worked in three different countries. So I, I do have a fair amount of experience. I made and I still make lots of mistakes. So, you know, watch and listen try to avoid these mistakes. First of all, there are certainly country specific differences. So for instance, just to illustrate this point, um, in the case of Germany, it's very common to include a picture. So now you can argue, looking at me, um, hence I um, left the German job market. That might be the case because if you um, have very dazzling looks, um, it might make it more or less likely to get an offer. It's also absolutely normal to mention your nationality, your date of birth, your, your marital status, your gender, the number of children and so on. This seems to be quite odd and intrusive. In the UK um, context, you don't mention any of that. So I suggest, depending on your target market, look at some examples. So how to find good CVs? So I recommend to look for um, job market candidates in top institutions. In my view, adding a mobile number is a really good idea because if things go well, people quite like to talk to you, not just use an email. The thing is, quite often people start with education. I personally prefer that, so I start talking about education, then I move into employment. In the UK, you would start with your undergrad degree. It would be unusual to go further back. In other markets, it's quite common to go down to primary and secondary school level. So, you know, your lower kindergarten and your upper kindergarten experience and so on. So that's not common in, in the UK. When it comes to employment, I would state the position. So might be, um, say, a lectureship, senior lectureship, the university, the start and end dates. It's not common to add a description because in most cases it's kind of obvious what you do as a lecturer. In the private sector that's different because job titles nowadays mean absolutely nothing whatsoever. Everyone is a director, manager and, and so on, but it means nothing. So people always add a few sentences so that people understand actually what the job really entails. It is optional to add your research area. Next publications here, the focus in most disciplines is on academic journals. In some areas, books are important, um, not in my area, really. Um, if you don't have any output, um, you would talk about the job market paper. So this is basically the paper you use to showcase your skills. Um, again, this is more important in the US context, but also in the UK market, it, it's common to do this if you don't have any output, which um, is not uncommon. You, you just um, are in the process to finish your PhD and now you want to enter the market, so you talk about your job market paper. In this case, you might add an abstract of your paper, so you might talk a bit more about it. Um, and um, maybe talk about a target um, audience, target journal as well. Now, research funding is certainly very important and also other aspects like, you know, um, impact, media coverage, but this is more really for the, you know, more experienced academics, so mid-career, so later in your career, this becomes much more important. Working papers, I would say it depends. So when I started, I always mentioned my working papers because there wasn't much else to mention, honestly speaking. 
if you don't have many publications, um, adding a few working papers is not necessarily a bad idea. But honestly, be um, reasonable. It, it's not massively impressive. You can always add, you know, some half-baked ideas and papers. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So don't expect that this is a, you know, it compensates for the lack of publications. It, it, it really doesn't. So only add your working papers if the working paper is really quite advanced um, or maybe was part of a conference presentation. Um, teaching experience definitely important in particular um, um, if you apply for lectureships. Um, so you should list um, the different courses you taught. In particular also mention the level, so undergrad, postgrad, MBA and so on. Mention uh, feedback if you get student feedback um, you should definitely mention that supervision undergrad dissertation maybe a master dissertations and so on so also mention that later um, in your career phd supervision and in particular completion so supervising to completion is an important aspect you might add some additional esteem factors so this might include some awards maybe some editorial positions, usually this happens later in your academic career. Then you might add conferences. Again, it doesn't really impress these days that much. You can always go to places. So I would I would mention it. It's fine. It does make, in my view, a big difference. And then finally your references. So this is in economics, the job market candidates. And again, you just look for your own um, areas. I did the search now in, in 2023, so this is now for the 2021-2022 um, job market. So I'll just look at one example um, here, so that's um, anyway that's all in the public domain, so people hopefully don't mind when I talk about this. Again, I will be very friendly as always. So that's um, the first CV, so in this particular case you have contact details, which you know, is, is a good idea. Um, citizenship, you don't need to do this in the UK context. So I, I tend not to mention it. Um, um, yeah, you can start with your education. That's perfectly fine. And as you can see here, the starting point is the BSc in economics. So that makes perfect sense. When it comes to the date range, it's perfectly fine to use years. Nobody really wants to go into the details um, at this stage. Um, references in my view, they could be moved further back. That would not be my focus. Certainly your thesis title is important. It gives also an indication about your research area. So that's definitely something useful. Then um, again, you state here maybe your research area if you need to, but it's kind of obvious based on the PhD thesis, um, teaching experience, as discussed, so you, you mentioned your courses, undergrad, postgrad, so that's certainly important. Positions held, now this, um, honestly, you could move that. It's a bit odd to keep it um, at this level. I tend to mention this after education, but you know, again, that's a matter of taste, but it makes it a little bit more prominent. Languages, other skills, I did not actually put this on my slide. Um, yeah, definitely not a bad thing to add. Is it massively important in the UK? Not really, because most people anyway only speak one single language. So here you go. I quite like also that, um, yeah, you know, um, Daniel put MATLAB and Starter under under that, you know, that makes perfect sense. Anyway, these are beautiful languages. By the way, if you want to get into Starter, um, I have amazing, amazing Udemy courses on Starter. Link is down below in the description. Now, this is kind of a natural thing now to highlight, isn't it? Then additional esteem factors, so that is quite nice. So having these different awards on separate lines would be a nice thing to do because they would really stand out a bit more. And there's certainly space for that. And then the job market paper. So that's basically uh, the abstract. I personally would also add the title. I think that is missing. I would have the title as well. And then the abstract. I also would usually expect this to be moved up. So starting with education is fine, followed by employment, in my view. Then publications. If you don't have any publication, 
talk of the shop market paper, then the teaching, and then the honors and so on, esteem factors, and maybe at the end languages, skills, blah de blah, and references. So I would we organize it a little bit, but otherwise all the elements are covered. Let's look at maybe um, Amanda. So I could so website no longer updated. We have a new website and oh yeah, that's great. So actually successful now assistant professor at the University of Zurich. Here you go. So that's excellent. Um, after postdoc at Microsoft Research New England. That's exciting. Now that's pretty cool. So we have a look at the CV. So that again is, um, is a nice way of doing it um, in bold letters, your name. That's a nice way to um, to stand out when you have contact details, so email, mobile phone. If you have a website, that's pretty cool. You can do that. If you are into GitHub, I quite like GitHub because I do lots of, you know, coding things as you might know. Um, so it's nice to use um, GitHub here. Anyway, GitHub is pretty good if you want to um, get websites for free. Um, employment is here the starting point perfectly fine to do. Personally, I tend to start with education and then talk about employment. Both is fine. Um, again, you see you have the range mentioned here in terms of years, sometimes also maybe months. Um, and then we have publications. Um, I quite like the separation. It gives it a nice structure. Also here you have a link to the paper. Um, published really well, you know, that's impressive. Journal of Political Economy, that's that is um, quite um, a good start, to be honest. Here we go. And then you have working papers and work in progress. Um, this is a bit a matter of taste, whether you would like to talk about it. Good. Then we have um, seminars, conferences. Yeah, definitely that's a nice way of putting it. So here it's more about, you know, showcasing, you know, the places that actually invite you. And this is, of course, really impressive. Yeah, so obviously in MIT, Harvard Business School and so on. So you can't do much better than that. Then a long list, and I like it in different separate lines, long list of, of um, esteem factors. So that's fantastic. Additional um, section on grants. So any research funding, of course, that's um, a good thing. Not necessarily expected at this stage, but already, you know, many things are happening early on. So that's quite impressive. Also getting this level of funding, that is definitely impressive. I haven't mentioned referee services. So this is usually also something you can put into the esteem factors. Um, again, that's useful to add. Um, in particular, if you're invited by top journals to review papers or by organizations to review um, funding applications, something to mention. Then teaching, absolutely important to cover these aspects. So that's fantastic. And then you might add additional things. Again, affiliations, this is more under esteem. You might have some additional business experience, which you should, or business activities, which you should cover. Um, I think that's also a good idea. So these are nice examples and they tick all the boxes for sure. So I hope this was helpful. If you want any um, additional information, um, just leave a comment below and um, I try to get back to you. I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, please like and share, spread the joy of data analysis. I see you next time.